What's going on guys, Dr. Marcus Waller here with Back in Action Dallas. Today we're going to be talking about painkillers and their effects on the inflammation response within the body. Why they're effective in the beginning and what you should actually use them for and why they don't actually fix the pain that you're dealing with over a period of time. So a lot of people think that because I take Advil and I don't have the pain in my leg anymore or whatever it may be that the pain is getting better. And I'm here to tell you guys it's not necessarily true, but at the same time it's there for a therapeutic purpose. So let's get into the video talk more about it. So our bodies have a very intricate system of what's called nociceptors. Nociceptors make us aware of our environment to let us know what's going on. And not necessarily just to say you're in pain, but more so what's causing pain, where it's directed to, and what you should do to get out of that pain. So if you're touching the tip of a pen, for example, and think of something even sharper, this is not gonna cause pain immediately, but if that pen were to poke through the skin and cause some kind of rupture or tearing of the skin, then your body's gonna make you automatically jerk back from it and make you go into a response to where it's appropriate to take that pen and pain away from your body. Um, it's really just a protective system. Our body has nociceptors and nociceptors send the appropriate response once pain becomes so great, it becomes a issue of our, of our own safety. So our body's always trying to protect ourselves, just like anything that you ever do, is wanting to make sure you maintain balance within itself. So that leads us to painkillers. Painkillers are great. They all have a time and a place. They do cause damage within the liver, kidneys, and other tissues in the body, especially over long-term use. That's why you want to use them appropriately and only when necessary. Um, everything has a time and a place, trust me. Uh, myself, I've been dealing with this hip issue for about three or four days now, and I just started taking painkillers to try to take away some of that pain. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a chronic stress issue I've been dealing with for a while and it's caused by the piriformis muscle, the small muscle that helps to externally rotate the uh, toes um, coming from the hip and the glutes. It becomes pinched and inflamed and the inflammation response leads to almost like a pseudo sciatic pain. So I've been dealing with that for a little while but I'm getting better with it um, and I just thought to myself why don't I share the information that I'm doing for myself with my people. So that being said let's talk about how these uh, chemicals into the body, what they do for the body, and how painkillers actually block those receptor sites. So when we look at the body itself, we have what's called prostaglandins, and prostaglandins are lipids or fats that sit at uh, damaged tissue areas, and they send out these chemical signals. And those chemicals are what's called arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid is a free-flowing chemical within the body that's created in response to injury. And what it does is it binds to a cell site called COX-1 and COX-2, which are two different enzymes that we have within our bodies as well. So once it binds, it causes a release of different chemical responses within the body. When it releases these chemicals, they raise our core temperature, it causes inflammation within that joint or that, that damaged injury site, or it causes our body to decrease the overall pain threshold, allowing for chronic pain or more severe pain to actually become worse and worse over a period of time. So I wanna kinda of demonstrate what these uh, uh, painkillers actually do within the site. So like I said before, if this is a COX-1, COX-2, pretend I have two cuffs and I have four arms or so, right? So this is COX-1, which is a enzyme site. And everything in the body has a cell receptor site and cell blocker site. So you have COX-1, and then you have freely floating arachidonic acid. Once that arachidonic acid binds to that cell site, that receptor site, it now releases what's called prostaglandin H2. And that's causing more and more chemicals to be released within the body, leading to inflammation, leading to core temperature increase, and also leading to a decrease in overall pain threshold. The way ibuprofen works is it goes into that same receptor site, like that there, and it blocks that site. So now that arachidonic acid can't go to that same site, so it becomes inactivated for that particular enzyme. So it causes the pain levels to decrease overall because your body can no longer feel or become aware of that chemical response that's already happening within the tissues. So, I hope I didn't eat that paper. What happens is over a long enough period of time, your body's gonna become used to this process and then the pain overall decreases over a period of time, allowing you to actually heal those tissues. So during the healing process, you wanna be stretching those tissues, you wanna be able to rehab those tissues, um, dealing with scar tissue, dealing with uh, pain from muscle soreness or weakness, um, increase overall activity because the last thing you want to do is try to work out a muscle that's already damaged or injured because you cause compensation within the body. 
compensation leads to more stress on the body because you're now causing the body to move in a position that it is not used to and that causes undue stress and force on other joints within the body and tissues. So I hope that was helpful for you guys to understand a little bit more about what painkillers do for the body and how they don't actually fix pain, they just help your body tolerate pain while you're going through the healing process. Uh, ice, heat, stretch, move, rest as needed is always the recommended method, but make sure you talk to your primary care provider before you try to do any kind of regimen at all. I just want you to get a better understanding of what these enzymes and these painkillers actually do within your body once they become activated in your tissues. And also, you may be asking, how does your body know to take that Advil, that Tylenol, that ibuprofen into that one site and only that one site? It doesn't. Those medications go inside the entire body and they start to just find any COX-1, COX-2 to bind to, to help block that site. Whether you have pain in your neck or if it's just in the knee, it's going to actually filter through the entire body so every tissue, every cell, every organ is going to become affected by it. So I hope that helps a little bit more. Um, just keep in mind, make sure you do whatever you can to get back in action. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Make sure you like and share this video. And as always, thanks for watching.